organizing it. It's going to be July 18th to tw through the 20th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, you can register online on our website, which is... Thank you, Peter. <laughs> it's also on our app. So if you have the app downloaded, it's on the main page. You just click VBS, and it'll take you right to the registration page. Um, also, if you're looking for any other information about our church, the website is a really great place to find that. All of our calendars and anything that's happening on in the church is that on there. So if you're looking for a prayer night and want to know when it is, it's on the website. Um, and then last but not least, I just want to thank you for your tithes. If you are prepared to give today, we have a tithe box on the back wall by the front door. Um, we also have our online platform forms, which are on our website. Um, so thank you for your generous contributions. And because of you guys, everyday life of the church is possible. So thank you. And with that, can we stand and uh, receive some worship today? Awaken my soul, come away. To hunger, to see, to thirst. Awaken first love. Come away and do as you did at first. Let's sing that again. Awaken my soul. Awaken my soul. Come away. To hunger, to see, to thirst, awaken first love, come away, do as you did. Spirit of the living God, come fall afresh on me, come and wake me from my sleep, blow through the caverns of my soul. Awaken. Awaken my soul. Come away. To hunger, to seek, to thirst. Awaken first love.
reassure me, come wake me from my sleep. Lord, through the caverns of my soul, pour in me to overflow. To overflow. To overflow. invite your presence here. We invite you to fill this room and fill our hearts. We invite fresh revelation of who you are. We invite a new portion of your spirit to come with, come and live in us. Spirit, come and fill this place let your glory now in vain spirit come and fill this place Let your glory now invade. Come, Jesus. Come, Jesus. Spirit, come and fill this place. Come and fill my heart. Come and fill this place. The presence of your glory now.
spilling out Jesus on everyone around us. Oh, spilling out joy, spilling out refreshment. Overflow, 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 overflow. sorrows there is an ocean deeper than fear the tide is rising rising there is a current stirring deep inside it's overflowing with the heart of god the flood of heaven crushing over us the tide is rising rising bursting Set all the captives. 
is free. Spring up a well, spring up a well, spring up a well in me. Nothing can stop this joy. We're dancing in the streets. Spring up a well, spring up a well, spring up a well in me. We come alive in the spirit. We come alive in the spirit. We come alive in the spirit. We come alive. We come alive by your spirit. We come alive in your spirit. We come alive in your spirit. We come alive, yeah. We come alive in the spirit. We come alive in the spirit. We come alive in your spirit. Spring up a well. Spring up a well. Spring up a well. Spring up a well in me. Spring up a well. We come alive in you, Jesus. We come alive in you, Jesus. We come alive. We come alive. We come alive in you, Jesus. We come alive. Break open prison doors, set all those captives free. Spring up a well, spring up a well, spring up a well in me. Nothing can stop this joy. We're dancing in the streets. Spring up a well. Spring up a well, spring up a well in me. We come alive in your spirit. We come alive in your spirit. We come alive in your spirit. We come alive. We come alive in your spirit. We come alive in your spirit. We come alive in your spirit.
Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaking. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus, because he's never He's faithful through generations, so why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. Oh, he won't fail. I've still got joy. I've still got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense. So I won't be going under. I'm not held by my own strength. Because I build my life on Jesus. And he's Never let me down. He's faithful in every season. So why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. He won't fail. is my firm foundation the rock on which I stand and everything around me shaking I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus cause he's never let me So why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't. He won't, he won't fail, he won't fail. was built on you. I'm saved with you. I'm going to make it through. Rain came when blue. My house was built on you. And I'm saved Oh, yeah. 
This is my firm foundation The rock on which I stand When everything around me is shaking I've never been more glad That I put my faith in Jesus He's never let me down He's faithful through generations So why would He fail now? Shout out! He won't He won't He won't Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaking. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. He won't fail. truest word I speak is when I call you holy. So I will repeat your praise as revelation grows. The truest word I speak is when I call you holy. So I will repeat your praise as revelation grows. I 
sing with all of heaven. Take me into your presence. I will sing with all of heaven. Where the angels call. They call you worthy over and over again. The angels call you holy over and over again. They call you worthy over and stop singing your praise I will never 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 stop singing your singing again I will never stop singing your praise I will never stop singing your praise we will Oh 
over and over stop I will never stop singing your praise I will never stop singing your praise I will never stop singing your praise I will never stop singing Stop singing your praise. I will never stop singing your praise. I will never stop singing your praise. Your praise. Stop singing your praise and worthy. I will never stop singing praise. We will live. We will praise your name. 
drawing me you keep drawing me I get lost inside this wonder Cause there's so much to discover New dimensions of your glory And I've only seen a glimpse You keep drawing me, you keep drawing me Closer to your heart You keep calling me, you keep calling me Closer to your heart At every facet of your beauty My heart responds with holy, holy Oh, you never cease to amaze me It's only just a start This is only just a start You keep drawing me You keep drawing me Closer to your heart You keep calling me You keep calling
keep calling me closer to your heart. You keep drawing me, you're drawing me closer to your heart. You're calling me, you're calling me closer to your heart. Yeah, just lean in, lean in. This is not just a song, this is an invitation. He keeps drawing you in. You know it, you know his voice. His sheep hear his voice. You keep drawing me, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, press in, press in, deeper, deeper, deeper. He's drawing you into something. Can you keep singing that, Catherine, lightly? You keep drawing me. Yes, Lord. You keep drawing (laughs) me. Yeah, we respond. Closer to you. Yeah, and we respond, Lord. You keep calling me. You keep calling me. Closer to your heart. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Like the psalm says, Lord, who are we that you would be mindful of us? Lord, we repent from living like, thinking like, and talking like we are the be-all, end-all. It is you who is holy. It is you who is set apart. It is you who is exclusive. It is you who is the God above all gods. Above all gods that we bow before during the week. You don't bow. I don't bow. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. So repent. 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 Change the way you think and start thinking like Jesus thought. He knew his father was holy. Whoo. So like the song says, let us continue to get lost in his love. He keeps drawing us. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And 
And we will never get over that. We will never shrug at that. We will never be indifferent to that. That the holy God of the universe draw, draws us in with his love. He keeps drawing us closer to his heart. Jesus, we want to know your heart. We want to know your heart. We are reading, we are studying, and we are teaching your Logos word. But we want to know what your Rhema word is. We want to know what your spirit is saying. We want to know what your spirit is doing here and now. We sing holy, holy, holy. Holy. Holy, holy, holy. Can we sing holy? Let's get lost in his love. Holy. Ha, ha, ha. I get lost in your love. Get lost in your love. Holy. We respond, Jesus. May we never lose our wonder. Yeah, keep responding, keep responding. There's more, there's more, there's more. Respond. So, Lord, we respond. We respond. <laughs> we respond right now. We respond throughout the day. We respond tomorrow. We respond, we respond, we respond. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We pray in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, band. Thank you. Can we thank the band really quick? Yes, they like to play music. But uh, I just want to remind you guys, uh, your bands are committed. They come here on Tuesday nights, most of them after long, hard days of work and family and commitments. They practice here for two hours on a Tuesday night, and then they get here at 7.30 every Sunday morning and uh, practice again. Yeah, they love it. But just make sure you thank them. Make sure you honor them. I look at them, and 
I see them as set apart, as holy, as Levites. Yeah, keepers of the temple from a very Old Testament view. It's in honor. Yeah, that tribe did not get an inheritance. They just got his presence. Yeah. Um, we have just some family matters to attend to. Um, some of you might have heard, some of you may know, but um, uh, one of our families suffered a great loss a couple days ago. Um, ben and Rena Klein, uh, Rena's father, passed away on Friday. Um, <laughs> I have a little bit of a, a grid for what that looks like. I know many of you guys do, but it's, yeah, it's shocking. Her father had been uh, struggling with his health the last few weeks, but it's a great loss for them, and uh, it's also a great loss for, for Heidi Grimm. That's her ex-husband, and um, that's the father of her kids, and I reached out to her, and it's like, you're you're going through a lot too, and she just said, thank you, you get it. I go, yeah, so can we, uh, they live in White Salmon, Israel. can we just extend our hands over to White Salmon right now? Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus, for your kindness, your mercy. Jesus, thank you for your healing. Lord, we lift up the Klein Grimm family right now. We lift up Ben and Rena and Heidi and the kids. And we lift up all of uh, Rena's siblings. She has six siblings who just lost their father on Friday. Holy Spirit, you are the great comforter. And so right now we just invite your comfort over that family. We invite your presence over that family. We invite your healing over that family. Thank you, Lord. And Holy Spirit, Spirit of Jesus, teach us how to love them well, how to pray for them well, how to be there for them and support them well. We just give that whole situation up to you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, so uh, Ben sends his regards. He was actually supposed to be up here this morning, and I uh, told him, please take the weekend off, be with your family. They'll be back soon. They'll be back soon. So, yeah, just kindly reach out to them and just love on them if you get a chance. So, um, yeah. <laughs> ah, thank you, musicians, for this morning. That was, uh, whoo. I've been around the, the church my whole life. I've been around worship my whole life. I've been playing on these bands for over 20 years now. Um, and it's amazing and it's beautiful just how much sometimes... Occasionally they talk, maybe 15% of the time, but most of the time the musicians and the pastor, the preacher aren't really talking, and yet they're all getting the same downloads. Um, we sang a song today called Firm Foundation, and uh, they had no idea I was going to talk today a little bit about our firm foundation. So that's just the Lord trying to get a message across. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Thank you for you are a God of perfect timing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to talk about the church a little bit. I want to talk about how Jesus feels about the church. Let's talk about what we feel about the church. I, as they say, and many of you guys did, basically grew up in a pew. Um, I remember we had a different church, a different religion, actually. Um, I think the music's still on, Stan. Can you turn it off, please? Thank you. My parents grew up in a different country, a different religion, um, a version of Christianity mixed with Roman, pagan, all sorts of stuff. And their family was ailing. It was struggling. They were on the verge of divorce. I was five years old. And they set foot in a tiny little Christian church. It was actually Ellie and Lila Quesada's church. They used to meet in the basement of the Parkdale Presbyterian Church. And that's where our entire family tree changed. My parents came to the Lord. They saved their marriage. They were married almost 36 years until last fall when my mom passed. And like I said two weeks ago, um, all five of their children love and serve Jesus. And uh, the church, the local church, has been a massive part of our lives. All of it. Sunday school, vacation Bible school, youth camps, worship music. And my siblings and I, we've all had our, our little rough patches. We've all struggled but the church became a place where 
It was just what we did. And ultimately, it's not about the church, just church, church, church. It's about Jesus. But Jesus is in the church. His people are in the church. And I grieved over the last couple years in indifference that I saw from people in the church. We went through a lot these last few years. You guys know what I'm talking about. Everything. (laughs) There's a lot of healing that needs to take place from the last two years. But Jesus is faithful and true. And like we sang today, he never fails. He won't fail. He won't. Yeah. I was grieved these last few years. 2020 was kind of a crazy year. We all know why. And a lot of us were in quarantine, but it just, uh, there was a lot of anger, a lot of hurt. And uh, I was serving a local church. And I saw a lot of people I used to run with. A lot of people I used to do discipleship with, a lot of people I used to write and sing and play with get angry at the church and bail on her and leave her and then turn around and spit on her and curse her and the people inside. I saw people I used to run with curse this book. People I used to run with deny their God encounters, their so-called life-changing God encounters. And a lot of relationships were strained and broken. This was all happening when Lily and I were in California. I saw that and, you know, it was happening all over. We had friends here, obviously. We had friends all over the country and all sorts of madness was happening. And I've been a part of the local church my whole life. I, I, they would tell me what was wrong with her and I'd tell them, I'm in it. I know what's wrong with her. I'm not bailing on her. That church is the bride of Christ. I don't treat the bride of Christ that way. I certainly don't treat my bride that way. Most of you certainly don't. They bailed on her. They spit on her. They cursed her. And I was grieved. Jesus cares greatly for his church. Jesus loves his church. And as we know from 1 Corinthians 13, if love is patient and love is kind, we know that Jesus is patient and he is kind with his church. I have never loved the church more. I've been a part of her a long time and she's been a part of me. I know what's wrong with her. And you guys know what's wrong with her. Let's be real. What's wrong with her is me. What's wrong with her is you. But that's okay. Props to you. You keep coming back here on a Sunday morning or Wednesday night, Thursday night. And you keep saying, I'm going to love her. A lot of us in here are married, right? And we all know, as I just found out this last year, you know, we're in love and we date and we're engaged. And then there's like a honeymoon phase and I didn't believe them when they told me in marriage counseling that just be careful that those feelings are going to fade a little bit. They're going to change. They're going to shift. You'll love your spouse. It's just that love is going to look a little different. Like, no, 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 no. Our marriage is going to be different. We're going to stay madly in love. You'll see. You wait. You wait, marriage counselor, pastor so-and-so. I read my four marriage books on relational health. And by the grace of God, we, we did a really good job in our purity during our dating. So, yeah, it's, it's all holy and redeemed, and it's going to be great. And like I've said here before, about a month in, oh, my gosh, we need to have a talk. We are not in Cabo anymore. Dorothy, we are not in Cabo anymore. Her name is not Dorothy. It's Lily. And our honeymoon in Cabo was amazing. It was a, yeah, court, COVID was a bummer. But we kind of got Cabo all to ourselves. It had just opened up, and there was no lines anywhere. And, yeah, it was, it was a wonderful experience. But anyway, that's my marriage. That's your guys' marriage. But what about our marriage to the church? Actually, we are the church. What about our marriage to our Lord, to our pursuer, to our, as, as another song I used to sing says, our divine romance. You know, your marriages are just pictures of us and Jesus. 
You know, Jesus will marry a bride someday, right? And he is making her ready. Yeah, an amazing God encounter on my wedding day about that. So I grew up in the church. I love the church. I have an idea of what's wrong with her. But I also know who's going to heal her. That's Jesus. I'm not giving up on her. I love her more today than I ever have with all her warts and everything. And I believe most of you do too. So thank you. And encourage brothers and sisters on the fringe to come and to love her and to serve her and to be patient and kind with her and long-suffering and all the stuff we talk about here on a Sunday morning. Ecclesia. Most of us in church have heard that word. It's a Greek word. I found out recently it's not even a religious or a spiritual word. It's just a simple Greek word. It means this. A selection of a chosen assembly of citizens for a legislative purpose. Doesn't that sound epic? It doesn't to me. It actually sounds quite boring. Uh, Let me read that again. A selection of a chosen assembly of citizens for a legislative purpose. So what I learned is ecclesia basically means jury duty. So anyway, welcome, you guys. Jesus used that term. Or if he was talking in Aramaic, the gospel was written in Greek. So that's the term that was used in the gospel. The ecclesia, the chosen, now hear this with the spirit, the chosen assembly of citizens for a legislative purpose. Oh, Jesus, what are you talking about? It's a political and governmental term, chosen. Jesus chose his disciples, and I hope you know that Jesus has chosen you. You know he has. We know the word church. It's an old English church, English word. Old English. It's comprised of two different languages. It basically just means the house of the Lord. Right? We know the church is not the building. We are the church. And yet, if we are temples of his spirit, we are the church. Right? The word church in English basically just means the house of the Lord. The house that hosts the Lord. Let me read out of Ephesians 1. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we would be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us to adoption as sons and daughters through Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace with which he favored us in the beloved, which is Jesus. First Peter 2.9. And he actually quotes and adds on to a passage in Deuteronomy 7. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. For you once were not a people, but now you are a people of God. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. You have received mercy, so remember, be merciful with others. I feel like I have to say that a lot. A lot. Be merciful. It's as if Jesus didn't stress it enough using parables and talking to his disciples and talking to his church. Be merciful. Be merciful. I was talking to one of my best friends who lives in Texas, and (laughs) he was going off. He's going to go to a wedding next week, and he just like, I love him, but he was frustrated at the wedding he was going to go to, and He was talking about his future, or his sister-in-law was going to get married, and he started talking about all her sin issues and how sinful she was and this and that, and I just looked, and I was like, careful. Be careful. 
Be careful. He started talking about some of the sin issues that she's walking in. I'm not sure she's fully following the Lord right now. And he was frustrated because she used to walk with the Lord and then in and out. And everything she listed, he listed off was stuff that, like, I struggled with and I did in, in a different life, in a different season. I was like, be careful. You need to be loving. You need to be merciful. By the way, everything you just listed off, remember my story? Remember I did this and this and hurt this person and did that? And he's like, oh, shoot, I forget. I forgot about your story. He's like, oh, yeah, you're right, you're right. I'm like, what about your story? He goes, no, you're right. And he, he just, at least he was self-aware to say, oh, I struggle, I get self-righteous. He told me. I'm like, that's amazing, self-awareness, good for you. See, the Pharisees did not have that self-awareness. They were like, no, we are righteous. No, 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 you're self-righteous. That's different. And I told him, He's a buddy of mine from Texas, and I told him, that's okay. I get self-righteous too. Trust me. And I'm a pastor at a church. Ha-ha. <laughs> How dare I, right? Turn with me to Matthew 16, 13. Just full disclosure, I'm not upset at you guys. I just get passionate. You guys know me. You guys have heard me lead worship, scream, all that stuff. So anyway, no, I'm actually really excited and joyful because I'm just like this right here. I talk about this a lot, guys. This little black book gets me so excited and joyful. And I think about it throughout the day. You can ask my wife. She's like, hey, what is it? I'm like, I got to go read. I got to go read. And it's not to preach. It's I got to go read for me. I, I don't. Uh, the pre that'll not even reading on what I'm preaching. I just need it for me. I need to I need to eat. I'm hungry. I need to eat. My spirit is hungry for this. Church, get hungry for this again. I know some of you guys have read it over and over and over. So have I. And I read it. And and, and you guys have felt this where I read it and go, oh, I didn't know that was it. Has that always been in there? I totally missed that the last 20 some years of my faith. This is alive and well, guys. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, chills. Matthew 16, 13. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he was asking his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, and others Elijah, but still others Jeremiah. Or one of the prophets. He said to them, his disciples, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father who is in heaven. I also say that you, I also say to you that you are Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades will not overpower it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be, shall have been loosed in heaven. Then he warned the disciples that they should tell no one that he was the Christ. Amen, amen, amen. So it's interesting that right before this passage, what happened? You can look in your Bible there. Jesus just got into it with the Pharisees a little bit because they were asking for, this, for a sign, right? Greeks about the knowledge. Jews asked for a sign. They're following Jesus around going, we don't like this, we don't like this. Show us a sign that you really are this Christ, the one we've been waiting for. And Jesus calls out their hypocrisy and says, no sign will be given except the sign of Jonah. That's a message for another day. And he tells them, I love this, you know how to discern the weather, but not the signs of the times. You Pharisees, you so-called righteous ones, you know everything. Nobody knows the law like you do. 
nobody knows how the church and, 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 and uh, the governance of the church operates the way you do. And you can't tell I'm right in front of you. You're asking me for a sign. I'm healing the sick. I'm raising the dead. Miracles everywhere. And you're asking me for a sign. It's me. But you're too self-righteous to notice. Because Jesus was not coming in the way they wanted him to come. They wanted him to come enable their practices. And he was going, no, you need to repent. The kingdom is at hand. See, they didn't like that. And we know as we study the gospels, the Pharisees, they, they were corrupt. They were cashing in on the people, right? And just be careful. There's a Pharisee spirit that creeps around. It can get on all of us on any given day. That self-righteous, that heart of a Pharisee. And Jesus is right in front of you. God encounters in miracles, and you're missing him because you can't see him. So he tells them that he's the one they'd been waiting for, but they denied it because he didn't come in the way they wanted him to come. Jesus then later tell, turns to his disciples and says, he warns them of the leaven of the Pharisees. He warns them. He goes, you guys are seeing this interaction with me and the Pharisees, but he tells them privately, be careful. Be careful of that leaven, that yeast, right, that they put in bread. Be careful of that little, you can almost not see it, but it makes a whole lump of dough rise. It gets in there, and it compromises the whole situation. Be careful with the teaching of the Pharisees, with their attitude. With, number one, the way they see God, the way they interpret the law, and the way they now hate on people and use and abuse and cash in on people because they love themselves more than they love people. And I know all of us in this room have been guilty of that at some point. So let us just repent and simply go, Jesus, what are you thinking about that person? Jesus, what do you want to do? Jesus, what are you actually saying in this little book? Not what I want it to say. What are you saying? What is your point? What is your purpose? What is your heart? We just sang it. He's calling us into his heart. So we just encountered a pop quiz with Jesus and the disciples. Is anyone here a disciple of Jesus? Be careful when you raise your hand. Be careful. You guys have heard me speak a few times personally, and it's semantics a little bit. I don't identify with the term Christian that much. Culturally, socially, I'm a Christian, you're a Christian, they're a Christian, they're all Christians. Most Half those celebrities are Christians, right? You know, and we see how they live. And, and again, we're no better. I, I, I'm aware of how some of us live in here and what some of us are healing from, right? Okay, let us focus. Let us focus on us. Christian, everybody's a Christian. Our president's a Christian. Our governors are, everybody's a Christian, right? Well, maybe not her, but that's okay. Be praying for her. Don't hate on her. Be praying for her. Yeah, and I'll say this. I don't like to talk about politics and all that stuff, but learn to see our president the way Jesus sees our president. Perhaps he's redeemable. Perhaps you are. Perhaps I am. Okay. Disciple, that's different. That's a message for another day. But Christian, there's a cultural Christian. A disciple, a disciple is covered in the dust of his rabbi. He's walking closely with Jesus like this. At the master's pace, a disciple follows his teachings and then disciples others into his teachings. That's a different standard right there. So anyway, once again, who are disciples? Oh, less hands went up. That's okay. That's okay. So Jesus just talked to his disciples. Pop quiz time. Every disciple of Jesus should be able to answer this question. Just like Peter, just like the disciples did. Who is the Son of Man? 
Who is Jesus? So they were debating 2,000 and some years ago, and Jesus is telling, who do they say that I am? They're saying this, who do you say that I am? He asked them for what do people say. They're on the fringes. They're out there. You're in my inner circle. You see me every day, all day. You've seen the miracles up close. You've seen the prayer life up close. I get to uh, disciple you guys in a little closer way, a little more face-to-face. Who do you say that I am? And Jesus answers, Peter, sorry, answers, you're the Christ. You're the son of the living God. So when people ask you, who is Jesus? Because guess what? 2,000 years later, guys, they're still debating who Jesus is. Oh, he's some historical religious figure, or he was a teacher, he was a prophet, or he was a hoax. I heard there's people out there believe he was a brother of Satan, and they're kind of this, I mean, all sorts of stuff. So 2,000 years later, and even people who have read this, who is Jesus? It's, it's quite simple. He's the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, the one the Old Testament prophecies prophesied about for hundreds of years. It's him. It's him, the Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one, the Son of God, the one who was going to set Israel free, who was going to bring us the forgiveness of sins. So when people ask you, who who is Jesus? Well, he's the Son of God. And remember, in this context, Son of God is, he has all the rights and privileges and nature and last name and lineage and heritage of God. You see Jesus, you see the Father. Right? Jesus is God in the flesh. It is Yahweh. It is the God of the universe, the creator of all things, the creator of you and I. That's who Jesus is. Tell them. You are the Christ, son of the living God. And Jesus turns to Peter and says, ding, 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 you got it. Jesus said in the Gospel of John, you see me, you see the Father. Again, the Pharisees did not like it very much. They called him blasphemous. They didn't understand their own teachings, their own law. They didn't understand he who was right in front of them. And we sing on Sunday mornings, come and have your way, come and have your way. But what if his way asks you to change your way? It's happened to all of us, right? Heart of a Pharisee. It's not you, Jesus, because you're not here to enable my practices or do things the way I like to do them. We do the same sometimes. We can be subject to do the same. Jesus said, blessed are you. Other translations, blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah. Other translations say, happy are you, favored and privileged are you, Simon Bar-Jonah. Simon, also Simeon, Bar-Jonah, Bar, son of Jonah. It's his family name. Simeon, or Simon, depending on the translation, is his given name. You guys know what that name means? It means the one who hears, the one who listens. And so Jesus is confirming Simon's name. Let him who who has ears, let him hear. Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you by my Father who is in heaven. Peter, you're hearing and you're listening. You're seeing and you're listening. Good on you, blessed, highly favored, happy. You're getting it. You're getting it. And even if he wasn't getting it, he was declaring it. Right? Peter, at this point, Peter still has a whole journey. 
And he changes his name to Kapha, which in the Aramaic means rock or stone. So Peter, the one who hears, Jesus changes his name right then and there to rock or stone. In this context, it's actually pebble because Christ is the rock on which he will build his church. Jesus is the Christ. The Son of Man is the Christ. That's the foundation of the church. He's going to build his church. But he calls Peter pebble. So here's the deal. Here's the interaction. You get it? Ding, ding, ding. I am the foundation of the church moving forward, of the legislative assembly of the chosen ones. You're going to be my pebble. I'm the rock, but there's humor in here. I'm going to call you the pebble. You're going to be the little rock. You're going to represent me. You're going to speak to me the rest of your life. You're going to tell others about me. There was Psalms. There's passages in Isaiah and Deuteronomy that talk about the rock. Peter just confirmed it, got the right answer. So now he is the pebble. He is the little rock. In 1 Peter, in 1 Peter 2, let me read this for you. Let us come to, Peter says this years later in a letter that he writes to the Hebrew people. Let us come to him to a living stone which has been rejected by men, but is choice and precious in the sight of God. You also as living stones are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer up, excuse me, spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For this is contained in the scripture, and he quotes Isaiah 28. Behold, I lay in Zion a choice stone, a precious cornerstone, and he who believes in him will not be disappointed. This precious value, then, is for you who believe. But for those who disbelieve, the stone which the builders rejected, this became the very cornerstone, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They're talking about rocks and stones, but we know in the spirit they're talking about the foundation of things moving forward. Okay? It's the most important part of a house. The foundation. And he talks in a different passage. You can build the foundation on the rock or you can build it on the sand. All these messages. Guys, this is really important. The foundation of this, which you call your home church, is Jesus is the Messiah. He is the Son of God. That is our foundation for our teaching, our preaching, our prophesying, our worshiping. Let that be the foundation of your relationships, of your marriage, of your family. Kids, we're doing Jesus. What are we doing with our lives? We're doing Jesus. What are we doing with our marriage? We're doing Jesus. What am I doing with my business, with my career? I'm actually doing Jesus. What am I doing with my life? We're doing Jesus. And what are we going to do for the rest of eternity? Jesus. He's the foundation of everything. It sounds simple, simple enough that we should be doing it on the daily, and yet sometimes we struggle. Sometimes we go back and forth. Upon this rock, upon this revelation, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. Love the church. Forgive the church. Be merciful with the church. And also, please don't worry about the church. Jesus got his church. It's his bride. Right? Us men generally know it's, it's up to us to protect our wives, protect our children, make our home a safe place. You think Jesus won't do the same with his church? with his chosen ones, with his chosen assembly for legislative purposes. Oh, we're getting to that in a sec. 
been tasked with a duty? Here we go. I will give you, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whew, did you guys hear that? I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Even then, a lot of us have heard that for years and years and years, and I'm not sure we're getting it. We have the keys. So again, like jury duty, we have been summoned, we have been chosen, and he's going to give us keys to the what? That's a pretty big deal. The God of the universe is going to give us the keys to his kingdom I got the picture this week of a butler. When the master is away, the butler has the keys to the kingdom. And he actually, while the master is gone, he has the authority. That's the keys to the kingdom. We've been trusted with the keys of his kingdom. Wow, wow, wow. And even then, the psalmist in Psalm 84 had a revelation of basically being a butler. He says here in Psalm 84, and we've heard this, For a day in your courtyards is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather stand at the threshold, other translations say, I'd rather be the doorkeeper, the servant, i.e. the butler holding the keys of the house of my God than live in the tents of the wickedness. Whoo. Binding things and loosing things. To bind something in the spirit while having the keys, while having the authority of his kingdom here on earth. To bind something is to forbid it, to declare it improper and unlawful. Partner with heaven, do it here on earth as it is in heaven. This has, come a lot, this has come up a lot in conversations I've had, which is one of the problems that people get, that even Christians, believers get, is they want to make earth into heaven. Jesus never talked about making earth into heaven. He actually talked about burning it all up, about burning heaven up too. No, 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 it is not up to us to make earth into heaven, and sometimes we try with our careers, with our money, with our influence, with our politics, with all the things we want to change. We want so bad to make this earth into heaven. We're missing it. It's about bringing his current kingdom to this earth. What does that look like, Jesus? Stop trying. I say this to all of you. I say it to me as well. Stop trying to make earth into heaven and just bring heaven to this earth. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for that revelation. Whew. Binding things and loosing things. Forbidding, declaring to be improper and unlawful on earth. Not because we feel like it or not because our earthly law says it, but because heaven says it. We're here to partner with heaven. Heaven knows better than we do. What is the kingdom of heaven? Paul talks in Romans it's just righteousness, peace, and joy. It's not a matter of food and drink. It's not a matter of laws and uh, religion and do this and do that and look like this and look like that. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. The whole point of Jesus is the kingdom is at hand. He brought you the kingdom, righteousness, peace, and joy. That's what we're doing when we're bringing heaven on earth. Whatever we loose, whatever we allow, that's what it looks like. We're already seated in heavenly places. We're here and we're there. That's the revelation Paul had. So we're doing things here. We're unlocking things here on earth in the natural. But remember, the kingdom of heaven is more real than our experience here, right here, right? This is all going to burn up. And I won't be here in a few decades, nine or ten decades from now. Won't be here, but I will be there. But Paul says, I'm already seated, here, seated there. And remember, God is doing things outside of time. Time is just here to keep us sane, 
He's outside of time. He's doing things in the past. He's doing things in the future, in the present. Oh, man. Whoosh. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Guys, the church sets the standard. We don't do it with political rallies. We don't do it by being loud on social media. Everybody flexes on social media. Look at me how loud I am. Look at how right I am, how brave I am. Go love your neighbor in a brave way, in a humble way. Talked about it a few weeks ago. Humility is real power. Being loud and boastful and self-righteous, that's fake power. You're flirting with stuff the Pharisees were doing. Humility is real power. It's up to the church to set the standard. I'm telling this to the church who I love deeply. Start taking personal responsibility. When I think of governors that maybe I'm not a fan of or I don't agree with their beliefs, their values, their laws, the way they see human life or sexuality or all the things that tick us off, you know, I got to be honest with you guys. I go, where were we? Anything you don't like, the depravity, the violence, I want to look in the mirror as a servant of this house, as a priest, as a holy priest set apart, a royal nation, everything we just talked about, and go, that's on me. That's on me. This president, that governor, these leaders, they were our kids. They were in our Sunday schools. They were our neighbors. They were in our youth groups. They were in our school systems. We were doing life with them. Where was the church? And I'm not here beating you guys up any more than I'm beating me up. I'm going, I want to look in the mirror and take personal responsibility. The past is done. I can't do anything about that. Oh, but he is in the redemption business. Let's redeem it. Let's redeem it. Moving forward, we're going to leave here in a few minutes. There's a whole hurting world out there. Whether they know it or not, they want to be, first and foremost, they want to be loved by you. They want to be treated kindly by you. And through a relationship, I bet you a lot of them want to be discipled by you. So when you don't like something that you see, rather than do that self-righteous, ugh, ugh. I try my hardest not to react like that. I go, where does, where does that leave me? Where do I fit into this? Where do I fit into this healing? Where do I fit into this relation, relationally? What is my responsibility? Because, again, I am God's chosen. He elected me. The assembly, part of the assembly, a citizen of the assembly with legislative, pers- uh, legislative purposes, the keys to his kingdom, So what is it up to me to do? How can I affect change? It's go time. And it's a beautiful burden. It's just the burden of Jesus. It's just all he did for three and a half years. It looks like his actions and his words in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's right here, guys. It's right here. Oh, we get so self-righteous and we judge the world. Oh, the depravity of the world. Man, let's look at our own little home, our own little house here. Let's look at our own marriages, our own kids, our own families. Yeah, let's take care of us first. And let's just, what did the song say? Get lost in his love, for he is holy. That's it. That's what we're doing. And for, in 1 Corinthians 5, I love this passage. Man, Paul, Paul says, what do I have to do with judging outsiders? Don't you judge those who are within the church? Basically saying, guys, and he says, those who are outside, that's the Lord that takes care of that. I'm talking to you guys. 
when he's writing his letters, Ephesians, Corinthians, all the rest, his epistles, he's not talking to the world. He's talking to the church. Guys, don't worry about the world. It's up to us to just love them well. Bring Jesus to them. We need to take care of stuff in our house. I'll end with this. I wrote this. There were just these thoughts I had. I wrote this in 2020 when I was grieved and frustrated to see how they were speaking about the church, the bride of Christ, my church, my family, flawed and broken as we are. I love her, and she loves me. This is just a little journal entry I want to close with. Apparently, it's open season on the church. I find it interesting that the ones who do the most complaining about her are also the ones who have either completely abandoned her or while still begrudgingly assisting her, do very little, if any, volunteering, serving, or praying for her. Yes, the church is broken and ill, but she doesn't need to be abandoned and have rocks thrown at her. She needs to be loved and healed. That's what we do with people who are broken and ill, right? If you've given up on the church, that is his bride, then those in deep relationship with you should be rather concerned. You are showing them that when you find blemish in them, when they disappoint you, or you don't get what you want from them, you will bail on them, loathe them, and tell everyone around them to do the same. Y'all are usually the ones saying the church is abusive, manipulative, and corrupt. Ironic. May we all look into a mirror. I've been in church leadership now for six years. She's hurt me, and she's disappointed me. But I've done the same to her. I'm not giving up on her, for I'm in covenant with her. Can we stand? Thank you, Jesus, for your great love for us. We thank you, Jesus, for your great love for your bride. Ha, 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 ha. We are your bride. The global church who are disciples of Jesus are your bride. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us well. Thank you for being kind and patient with us. Thank you for dying for us, resurrecting for us. Lord, we thank you for healing us and continue healing us. Yeah. Just position yourself to receive some healing. Sometimes we open our hands like this, like we're about to grab and hold the TV. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. I love it. I love it. Holy Spirit, pour out your healing in this room right now. Holy Spirit, pour out your healing when it comes to church hurt, when it comes to church disappointment, when it comes to betrayal. We break off indifference in the room right now. Jesus, if you love the church greatly, then we love the church greatly. If you serve the church greatly, then we serve the church greatly. If you are patient and kind with your church, Jesus, we are patient and kind with her. We are patient and kind with each other. Lord, we repent of self-righteousness. Heal us daily of self-righteousness. We want to get lost in your love. For you are holy. We get lost in your love. Ha, ha, ha. We thank you, Jesus, that you are our firm foundation, the rock on which we stand. We can never declare that enough. Deuteronomy declares it. The prophet Isaiah declares it. The Psalms declare it. The Gospels declare it. And we declare it today. And we do it again and again. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Lord. You are the Christ. You are the foundation of everything moving forward. Thank you, Jesus, for the keys to the kingdom. Teach us about the kingdom. You've taught us in the Gospels, Lord, but continue to teach us today and tomorrow. It is an honor to serve your house, Lord. It is an honor. Not just that you would be mindful of us, but that you would give us the keys to your kingdom to bind and loose. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for the new revelations that are happening happening individually in this room right now. We thank you again for the healing. We thank you for the path that lies ahead. It is a good one. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We praise you. We thank you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, keep making some noise if you love the church, if you love the bride of Christ. Woo! Ha, 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 ha. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Linda, does anybody need prayer, specific prayer for anything? We're going to have a small prayer team come up. Do you want to come up and join me? Sorry to put you on the spot. I know you don't like that. Just, yeah, probably just on the, who else is on our prayer team? In a little, a lot of them are gone today. If you need some prayer, check this out. If you need some prayer, come up to Linda, to John, or grab the person right next to you. We're doing this or we're not. Come on, let's start praying for each other. Or if you need to go, you are released. Have a wonderful day. But if you need prayer, please do not leave today without getting some prayer. We love you. We'll see you next time. Blessings.